This is it guys, we're now hours away from seeing a bunch of new exciting Apple products. The iPad Pro, it's all but confirmed, given how many leaks and rumors we've had about this device in the last few months. The other product we might see is the Apple AirTags, and I'm not too sure about them, I'm not really that bothered about them to be honest. I wonder how you feel about them. But the star of the show for me will be the new processor. Apple are expected to announce the A14X. It could be a completely different name, but that's the name that follows their typical naming convention. So we should expect to see this really intense looking chap, our boy Johnny here, not Johnny Ives sadly. He'll be walking around this clinical room with Macs on wheels that cost 700 bucks, giving us some mind blowing numbers. As you may remember, Apple launched their M1 chip last year with some incredible leaps when it comes to processor technology. And this is where I get really excited because if they manage to fit that chip that is as powerful as their M1 chips into the new iPad Pro, then we should be able to run some incredible workloads. And to remind ourselves on the crazy numbers of the M1 chip, the M1 has 16 billion transistors, four times faster video processing, now I'm sounding like the Apple guy, seven times faster image processing. They came up with their own unified memory architecture, which basically means low latency access to data in memory. Fantastic for gaming, brilliant for image processing, but the key change for me in the M1 is that they were able to integrate the CPU, GPU, the neural engine, IO, data transfer basically, all of that and some other bits that I don't remember, all into a single chip. This means more power, better heat management and improved battery efficiency. I'm definitely sounding like the Apple guy. Based on the information out there on the interwebs, it looks like the A14X powering the new iPad Pro will be based on the M1 chip architecture. And that unleashes a world of possibilities, as I said, for the iPad Pro. Now, watch out for the couple of jargons I'll be mentioning here. I'm going to mention a few words that the entire tech industry sometimes overuses to impress, but I'm going to try and translate them into what they really mean for us, iPad Pro potential buyers. Integrated graphics. This means we get crazy fast performance without the heat of traditional GPUs. Some of the apps that should be able to take advantage of this are Photoshop, LumaFusion, Procreate, Lightroom, and dare I say, Final Cut. Are we seeing pro apps coming to the iPad Pro now? I'd say very soon. Well, the performance is certainly there, right? So what might stop it is the form factor. It's a bit tricky, but with Thunderbolt 3 support, USB 4, we could benefit from high resolution displays and fast external SSDs. That could be a dream. It's all speculation, of course, but the good news is we should hear more about it in the next few hours at the event. And worst case, we'll be hearing it at the WWDC in June. We're talking weeks now until we know more for sure. I still think that from a performance and form factor point of view, there will be a gap between the iPad Pro and the MacBooks and even the iMacs, but these new iPad Pro features should be making that gap much smaller. I'm not saying that Apple will completely kill off a product line here and say that the iPad is the next computer. What? They've already, they've already said that, did they? Okay. But in real terms, the iPad should be the next computer for a lot of people. The other jargon is machine learning or neural engine or AI. The M1 was designed to be able to deliver up to 11 trillion operations per second. All of those creative apps again, like LumaFusion, Illustrator, AutoCAD, Photoshop, all of those should be able to take advantage of this new architecture. But just how powerful is this chip gonna be? Well, hypothetically speaking, it should be at least twice as fast as the previous processor. And history has shown us that the X is about 90% faster than the previous model. And that's not just an Apple thing. It's normal to see this trends in processor technology. It's known as the Moore's law. The number of transistors or microchips doubles every two years. So we should expect huge numbers to be announced, not just in the processor speed, but also in the battery consumption. I think we might finally see way above 10 hours battery on the iPad. It's just a hunch, but if the A14X is anywhere near as powerful and efficient as the M1, then that's not entirely impossible. The event named Spring Loaded is set to launch several Apple products including the new iPad Pro, Mini, AirTags, and the new iMac with the M1X chip inside. All of those products, when they become available, I will be bringing them to the channel. Talking about that, when can we buy it? I think we should be able to buy the new iPad Pros by Friday the 23rd, which is typically the release date for Apple products. Why do I think that? Well, that's what they've done before. It could be different this year because of stock shortages and big boats getting stuck, but Friday is usually what they go for. Last year, we had a few examples of this with March 17th for the event, 20th the Friday as the release, and the iPhone 12 event as well last year, which again, the release was on a Friday, the 18th. So April 23rd is the date I believe we'll be able to load our credit cards with even more debt. Thanks, Tim.
We should see the prices around 800 for the 11 inch and 1000 for the 12 inch, assuming the leaks on the sizes are real. And as well as reviewing these products when they become available, I will be covering the event live with my friend Patrick and Saran from Saran Byte. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the latest tech products and when the live stream goes out. See you and your smiling faces on the next one. Definitely buying one anyway, not potentially.